they were playing uh, Satin Doll, and uh, Katie and I went up to watch the dancers. People screamed, people ran, glass shattered, water came out. You just can't understand the enormity and the gravity of the situation that night. The catastrophe on the skywalks. It is, uh, for better or worse, one of the most significant events in the history of Kansas City, Missouri. 30 years after the fall. The tragedy that consumed Kansas City's Hyatt Regency Hotel forever changed the city. It was a Friday night, much like this one. And on that fateful night, husbands and wives, couples and friends, all had one thing in mind, to relax and have a good time at a popular dance. And then the hotel skywalks fell. At the time, it was the worst structural collapse in American history. It was a true tragedy, but on that night, the true spirit of Kansas City shined bright. Barney McCoy was the first reporter on the scene for KCTV 30 years ago. We invited him back to file this report. Tea dances were a popular attraction at Kansas City's sparkling Hyatt Regency Hotel in the summer of 1981. So it was no surprise that 1,500 people filled the hotel's atrium lobby, listening and dancing to music on Friday, July the 17th. Many of the attendees looked on from the skywalks suspended above the lobby. There was a nice variety of people, and it was just it was just fun. Frank Freeman and partner Roger Grigsby were among the happy crowd that night. Getting out on the dance floor, uh, we both like big band sounds. At five past seven, Freeman, Grigsby, and hundreds of others stood beneath the skywalks watching the dance. And I hear a slight popping, crackling sound. And there was like dust. Suddenly, second and fourth floor skywalks gave way. Falling debris struck Freeman and pushed him away from the falling skywalks. Stunned, he realized he'd missed being pinned by inches. And then it hit me. Where did Roger go? I would not allow myself to believe that he went under, yet I saw him go under. You love this man. I loved him very much to this day. Broken water pipes flooded the lobby as sparks danced off live electrical wires. The whole thing just like broke flush, like somebody pulled a pin out of it and it was time for it to fall. Any survivors injured, in shock, or both didn't know if their spouses or friends were trapped in the debris that littered the Hyatt lobby. As far as people surviving, the people that are in there right now, it appears to be a very, very grim situation. The chances are very slim. And you looked around and you went, oh my golly, what am I doing here? Outside the Hyatt, Dr. Joe Wackerly and other first responders worked frantically to prioritize hundreds of injured, transport, and treatment at area hospitals. Inside the Hyatt, Wackerly and rescue workers faced another enormous challenge, making their way past those who died to reach those seriously injured and still pinned in the Skywalk rubble. And then, unfortunately, we had the people that were, were going to die unless there was an immediate intervention. It's a memory that still haunts Dr. Wacker. Did I make the right decisions in every instance? Did I do all the right things for every person that trusted me with their life? Did I, could I have done a better job? Could somebody else have done a better job? Um, if you're a professional and you care, you always should be asking those questions, but there's a point at which you need to let it go. Uh, and that's hard, especially given that night and those particular people and the way they died. It'll be a 
a long time before I forget what I have witnessed in the last few hours. Former Kansas City Fire Department spokesman Harold Kanabi was also there that night. And removing tons of debris to reach trapped victims was something Kansas City firefighters had never faced before. I did watch firefighters take machines working in tantrum to lift literally hundreds of tons. The handles on the hydraulic jaws that rescuers used got so hot that firefighters had to wrap them with rags to keep their hands from burning. But they pulled those walkways apart while other firefighters crawled in to pull live victims and bodies out. Kanabi remembers one reporter asked which firefighter was the biggest hero. I was quite angry and I told him those guys inside just because they're wearing uniforms and special clothing, helmets and all this kind of stuff. I said go in there and look and see how many of them are crying like babies. I said there's no heroes in there, there's guys just trying to save lives and it's tearing their hearts out what they're seeing. The important thing was to get the injured out of here as quickly as possible, not bother taking any names or anything and get them out. Former Kansas City Mayor Richard Berkeley also witnessed much of what happened 30 years ago at the Hyatt. Little did I realize the magnitude and the enormity and the multiple tragedies that were involved. It was just uh, devastating by the time we got finished. Berkeley says he saw something else. Strangers helping rescue victims and consoling survivors. Unsummoned construction workers arriving unannounced with jackhammers to free victims. And thousands of other Kansas Cityans flooding to area Red Cross centers to donate blood. Tonight we're fine. We'll need you tomorrow. We'll need you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all next week. It really demonstrated what a great city this is and how people pitch in and help each other and, and volunteer for blood donations and all that. It just, uh, that was inspiring and very helpful and very meaningful. It seemed that everybody in Kansas City knew someone who was at the Hyatt Regency 30 years ago, the night that the skywalks collapsed. The tea dance participants, the emergency responders, the people who were injured, and the people that died. But what made this tragedy different than, say, a tornado or car accident is that this was a tragedy that never should have happened. I don't see any reason that uh, uh, a catwalk would collapse uh, in a one-year-old building unless there was some fault somewhere. An investigation by the National Bureau of Standards found a flawed design change had been made by the Skywalk structural engineers and steel fabricator. Hyatt Regency architect Bob Berkebeil says it was an obvious engineering mistake and nobody caught it. The Skywalk's box beam hanger rod connections tore loose. They said it, it would have collapsed under their own weight had the hotel never been occupied. The worst structural failure in U.S. history had become Kansas City's biggest tragedy. 114 people died. 216 others were injured that night. And 30 years later, memories of many who are at the Hyatt Regency still evoke pain, anger, and sadness. How do you account for that? I, I have probably spent more time thinking about that question of how you account for that tragedy than anyone could imagine. I couldn't even measure. What I have concluded is that I don't understand exactly how that happened and how I would live it differently. But they didn't do their job. And that's what it boils down to. It went up because of man, and it came down because of man. It was about two years ago that I walked into the Hyatt for the first time, 28 years later, that my eyes didn't tear up. First time. Lawsuits would follow demands for more than a billion dollars in damages for the people killed and injured in the Hyatt Regency Skywalk collapse. The lawsuits have long been settled, but for many people who are at the Hyatt Regency, when the Skywalks fell, one thought will always linger. Blame is not productive, constructive criticism, learning from mistakes, getting better and moving forward is productive. But it's hard as a human to understand the error that caused all that to happen. So I have to deal with that because 
I firsthand saw what happened and experienced it. For KCTV 5 News, I'm Barney McCoy. It's easy to see how Kansas City responded on July 17, 1981. Not just those who came to the Hyatt to help, but those who left here hurt, lost loved ones, or learned everything they could knowing that a tragedy like this one could happen again. We leave you with a first-hand account of that night, how it played out, and the impact it's still having today. I answered the phone and they said the Hyatt Regency has collapsed. Former KCTV 5 photojournalist John Tigert had just got home from work when he received a call from the news desk. And I, I said, well, that can't be. So uh, they said, you well, You thought that was impossible to, to, to hear that. Exactly. And, uh, and so the, they said, well, something has collapsed down there and there's a lot, of dead, and a lot of dead and injured, so. So he rushed to the Hyatt and was stunned by the first thing he saw. Getting out of the car and um, having a guy walk up to me that had a shard of glass sticking through him was my first memory and the one that's pretty much seared in my mind. KCTV5 reporter Barney McCoy had arrived at the Hyatt minutes earlier. He, too, was having a hard time believing his eyes. Seeing these people who were literally in front of us that we could reach down and touch, and yet we couldn't save their lives because they were trapped beneath uh, tons of rubble. Uh, it was so frustrating, and it was so terrifying. Reflecting on the sheer magnitude of the disaster, it's the pain, suffering, and confusion that's most vivid. I remember the chaos because a lot of the spouses who in one second were standing next to a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, suddenly those people had been gobbled up by this collapsing skywalk. John Tigert moved quick and got the man who'd been impaled by a shard of glass to an EMT. It was obvious that his injuries were serious, but what concerned me even more so was the state that he was, you know, the state of shock that he was in. And I knew he needed help right away. So that was the first thing I did. And so right away you knew this, this, this was terrible. It was an awful thing. What stands out to both men about the Hyatt collapse is the bravery and heroics of the rescue workers. Who sacrificed their own uh, potential well-being to try and get to the people who were trapped. Um, not knowing who might survive, not knowing who might die, and knowing that many people who were alive would die before the evening was out. And not knowing, not having any inkling of how many people were really trapped beneath all that rubble. That was the tough part of it. And to think, the evening of July 17, 1981, began with so much excitement, so much celebration. The Hyatt Regency was Kansas City's Titanic. It was a newly constructed hotel that had been open for about a year with the latest technology that went into the construction of that hotel. It was a Friday night with 1,500 people in a lobby participating in a big band dance. And the last thing that anyone expected is that the Skywalk would tear loose and fall onto the floor of that lobby and kill 114 people.